Hello Modkit Mayhemers, welcome back to part 2 of the T72 hand brush painting video. I was going to make it a three-parter but I think I'll do it down to two parts. So in the last video we painted the basic camo scheme and just did the basics and block colours so the whole tank is actually you know kind of done. So we're moving on to weathering now and chipping. First of all I want to say thank you very much for everyone watching the last one. Yeah, it seemed like everybody liked it so that was quite cool. And that's inspired me to, to get this second part done. Some people have seen that I started working on a Hellcat. <laughs> I was thinking about doing a video on, on like those old model kits that you've kind of abandoned and uh, they sit there and they either go in the bin or they just collect dust on the shelf for, <laughs> for a long time. Anyway, if you want to see that, if you're new on here, like and subscribe below and I'll put that together as soon as I can after this. So we finished last week with just the camo done. Uh, I quickly painted up the NSV tank cannon, it goes on top of the turret. The first part was to do these filter. Vallejo acrylics are a lot easier to work with in terms of no turpentine or white spirit or cleaning, stuff like that. You can just use water. And I wasn't sure totally how I was going to do it, so what I did first of all, I got the black filter and I watered that down and then I only painted the kind of purpley areas and because it, it looked too muddy on the green so I thought what I'll do is I'll, I tried this underneath actually do the purple light areas in that black so it makes it look more dirty and you know a bit more sort of smoke stained so it's kind of look more battle battle weary and then I tried the different colors so it was a yellow and a green wash and in the end the yellow worked best it really brought out the green olive, so it kind of made it ping really nicely. Oh, you can see where the olive works best, you know, it works really well with the green and it also works really well with the khaki and that really brings the colours out. It just made it pop really, went from quite a flat green as you can see there to a more yellowy colour and that kind of looked, looked cool, so I thought, you know what, I'll go with that. Again, I've watered this down quite a bit, so you know, vary it to whatever your taste is in terms of how, how strong you want it. If you have it too too strong, it just kind of stains it really bad and it, it, it looks a bit messy. You just want a subtle tone. That's what I found looks the best. I mean, it's up to, it's up to you really what, how you do it, but, but that's what I found. Yeah, I just stuck to the greens and browns and then just used the, the black wash for the gray areas. Again, areas like this, the wheels, it really, really works for them as well. Um, they look rather flat when you've just painted them, so when you start doing this, it, it, it really lifts the kind of the look. Another good thing is with these blocks, it really picks out them as well. It, it makes them stand out. Well worth doing if you've got the washes, enamel or acrylic. On to chipping. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do here, so again, like I said, you know, try an, the underneath of a piece of either turret or the, the body and um, and just go with that. Now I did make a mistake here. I don't think I should have used a white like this. It kind of looked like bird poo. <laughs> it looked like a bunch of pigeons had sort of <laughs> just flown over and uh... anyway. That said, in some places it did look okay, but I think if I was to do it again, I would go with um, maybe something a bit more of a gray rather than the kind of sheer white that I used. It, it just was a bit too much and it's funny because it works actually on a tiger tank that I did. I, I used a lighter, quite a lighter colour. It worked, but on the grey for some reason it just looked way over the top. And I kind of should have stopped, but I didn't. <laughs> I carried on and I painted this front section of the tank. And after I was kind of, well, maybe I can save it by painting in some dark areas in the middle of the white um, chips, you know, like you usually do. And that didn't really save it lesson here really is maybe be a bit more subtle I should have been a bit more careful and used a gray I think that would probably work better so anyway I'll know for the future I tried different types of foam and I found that the gray foam will, will give you a nice result as well I mean each foam because of its density it will give you different effects and the gray one which is from I think it's from games workshop or flames of war packaging you know once it's ripped up you can get you some nice sort of results and i also use this green which is standard you know kitchen scour foam uh, and and that that works as well 
what I found was it's a good idea to rip up say five or six different ones and then change them up so you don't get the same repeating pattern because it's very easy to get a repeating pattern your eye instantly spots something that's repeating and it, you kind of you, you lose the effect so you want to vary it as much as possible using different foams is a good idea so when you do do that just give yourself a few different options you can see there i painted some black in to try and save those white spots and in the end i thought you know what i'm gonna this is a simple tank i'm, I'm kind of trying to keep it as simple as possible just stick with a one color chip and try and find some colors that work with the different colors and i found dark green and a very dark kind of rust red seemed to work you can see they've even used a little bit of sort of highlighted red i just tried different colors and had a look at what would work in terms of each individual camo color when you're trying that process you, you sign up you kind of find out what works i mean with this you kind of find colors that seem to complement the original color in terms of the chipping it makes a hell of a difference when you start doing this it really really starts bringing the tank you know it feels like it's it's kind of getting the detail it needs now it really starts picking out the corners and edges of um areas that you chip it saves you a massive amount of time you know individually painting this would be an absolute nightmare and at the end of the day you want to finish the kit there's no point starting something and then get tired of it and you know you just end up unmotivated and it goes on the shelf and it's never finished and I got plenty of them. <laughs> That's why the Hellcat video would be good because, uh, you know, it's kind of like saving a kit and getting something out of it. So if you only want to take chipping to sort of the first level and it's, and it's enough to pass a tank like this, a 20 pound tank, then this technique is, is definitely worth, worth trying. I mean, it's up to you at the end of the day. How much time do you have? You know, if, if, if you can, if you're happy with this results that this is getting you, then all the better. But if you want to take it to the next level, then you could individually get in there and start painting little dark gray chips in the, within the actual areas that you've chipped. And once that was done, you know, I was pretty happy with the results. I also painted up the exhaust staining area with a really you know, oily look. And then once that was done, I went on to dust covering. I used uh, a green grey and I think I said in the first video it was a German grey but it actually wasn't, it was a green grey. Yeah, using a green grey, heavily, heavily watered down, I mixed it up and then just started applying it in, in the areas where I wanted it, the, sort of the heaviest. It instantly, you know, has a result effect so you have to be very, very sure that you're happy with the colour because once you start, <laughs> there's no going back. Like I said in the first video, try underneath the tank and see what works and what doesn't and then once you're happy with that, commit with it and uh, start painting the areas. So I started on the wheels. You can give the back of the wheels a quick coat as well over the mud. The wheels do take a, a while, but it's, it's worth the results because it kind of ties the tracks and wheels in with the actual main body of the tank. You can see here the, the difference between the dust and the, the undusted track. Right onto the back of the tank the back of tank get really dusty and kick up all that stuff from the track so you know it's going to be the one of the places that's going to have the most amount of dust so you, you probably want it a bit thicker here this is a standard flame of war um green gray but it's the same vallejo made those paints anyway so they, they they're the same green gray is actually a really good paint to have worth having if you haven't got it paint the side of the tank here again this will be really dusty although you probably want it's the one thing with the t72 the skirts come down quite low so you can't really see a lot of the the armor behind i mean i'd cut away a section just because um that was on the reference photo and it thought it'd be quite interesting to see if i could do that the only trouble with that is it exposes the kind of link section track that doesn't sag properly like like it would do in real life so that's the only downfall of sort of link link sections like these so you know length and link i think they're called um you know you, you don't get that kind of realistic sag but you know it was still good fun to sort of add a bit of detail that wasn't on the kit right onto the back now this is where i was kind of a bit stressed i needed to be able to do the back of the tank but blend it in as it moved forward to the front and i wasn't entirely sure how that was going to work in terms of you know you, you add more water but will there be a definite tide mark in terms of like where it goes from dust not so much dust but in the end it worked out fine i just took my time and then blended it with a bit more water and a bit more water as i moved forward past the engine deck um pretty much up to the turret and actually gave it a really nice two-tone effect at the end 
you know you'll see in the photos that the front of the camo at the front is still quite visible and then as it moves back towards the back of the tank where the dust really kicks up it um you can it's, it's barely visible under the green gray so uh, that was a really nice effect and I'll, I'll definitely do that again in terms of uh, you know if i do more hand painting brush painting stuff and after that it was on to some details on the nsv tank cannon paint that up get some reference and uh, and then copy that once that was done i put some gun metal down onto a piece of card and i dry brushed it onto the tracks that just gives a bit of you know kind of another sort of subtle tone and change in the tracks it looks like they're worn and, and they're being used you can see there the difference between it with and without i painted the track teeth so they get worn as they go around so yeah just a bit of gun metal on them and then if you take some substantially brighter silver put that on a card again and then dry brush that onto the rounded corners of the tank track so it kind of acts like a false highlight just do the rounded parts you know just either end of the track and uh, yeah right now i haven't done this for years so you take a <laughs> you take a piece of sprue <laughs> you put it over a candle i really failed at this one but <laughs> so i kept trying and turning this, this piece of sprue and eventually eventually i get there Do this if you can, if you can't, don't worry, you know, you'll find something else that works as an aerial, so, and after, you know, six attempts and a couple of burnt fingers, <laughs> I got there. And uh, once I've done that, just paint that quickly black. I add a little bit of extra rust on the edges of the oily stains on the, uh, the exhaust of the tank, just to give it a bit of more tone. Just shows where the heat's just burnt the paint. Right, onto some mud. Now, this tank had a very subtle amount of mud around its hubs. When I look, if you look at the photo, you'll see that it just literally collected around the bolts and the hub cap. So I used some fixer, the same as I did on my pigments video. I'll link that below. And yeah, just painted that in to the around in around the hub. And then using a piece of folded card, I'd scrape some of the pastels onto it and then use that folded card to tap it onto the hub, you know, give it a bit of a shake. And then when you've got enough on there, you can also scrape it on like this. I've done that a few times. And uh, if you need a bit more color or pastel to it, so just add that. Or we'll tap it to settle it and then flip it over to collect again. And then you can reuse the, the pastels that, that kind of fall off. So you save wasting it. And you kind of get a very, you know, light mud kind of pattern. And then, yeah, use a brush to sort of tamp it down. Gets any of the last bits of it off. And you've got, you've got, you've got, you've got mud in your hubs, muddy hubs. So yeah, it's quite a nice subtle effect and it worked well. I was quite happy with that. Work your way along each wheel. The front, I again painted on some fixer and then just scraped on from the straight off the pastel stick onto the onto the tank and then tamp it down with a brush and it kind of makes it sludge up like it's muddy, you know, like wet mud. So that's kind of cool. Right, when it came to putting the tracks or the wheels back on, I'd found that the paint had built up um inside so they wouldn't actually go onto the the actual axles so i had to get a file and just swizzle it around in each of the wheel and and then that allowed it to sort of fit back in and then yeah take some super glue and glue them in and then once they're in and you're happy with them glue on the top uh, you end up with a little bit of a gap at the front but i used a bit of filler and then i covered that with mud and then you can either glue turret on or you can leave it loose like that i think i glued it on in the end Glue in the aerial, glue on the NSV cannon, fill the seam gaps that you get from putting the two halves together. Just at the end, when, when it was all coming together, I took some more green grey and I just dry brushed a little bit of the hubs just to tone down the, the mud because it was, I don't know, when I, when I kind of looked at it at the end, it felt like it was a bit too heavy, just fractionally, so you could just tone it back a little bit with a bit of dry brush. That kind of gives you a bit more control over the look. I mean, you probably could put maybe some, some oil stains in there as well. I didn't, I didn't think about that time. But uh, yeah, if you want to bring it up another level, put a little bit of oil sort of darker areas where the oil's obviously sort of seeped into the, the soil and uh, made it go darker. You can use pastel stick again as well to, to sort of get go back to areas that you missed out. Like underneath there, we definitely collect mud. I put some fixer on and, and just scraped out from the pastel stick. And then finally, back of the tank, I added some where the mud would 
kick up and uh, and just land on the back. It's very, very subtle. I didn't put a huge amount there, just enough on the edges to, to sort of tie it together. Gives it a little bit extra depth on the kind of faded out dusty look. Uh, and then yeah, again, dry brush down with, with some green gray. And there we have it, the T72 completed. It's only taken a year, <laughs> but it looks great. I'm really, really happy with results for a, you know, a paintbrush kit. It's a cheap kit perfect for learning on just try all different things you know at the end of the day that's what it's about is just trying different things and having fun while you do it but anyway listen thanks very much for watching i really appreciate watching my videos it's uh, it's been great to get back and um, and doing them again and i've really enjoyed it and it's you know, it's just nice it's just really nice to be back thanks very much for watching take care i'll see you on the next one like and subscribe below that really helps me out and yeah have a lovely day Ta -ra.